good morning in the last class we have seen all the prerequisites for a genetic algorithm so in this session let us talk in detail about the genetic algorithm and let us also practice one example so practicing this example will give you the trace of the algorithm so that you need not uh, learn the algorithm the rote learning will not help you to remember the algorithms but if you trace it and if you solve it with an example then it helps you in better remembering the algorithm okay so let us start with the algorithm first so before going to the algorithm i'll just give you briefly the steps that we follow okay so this genetic algorithm is mainly aimed to search a space of candidate hypothesis in order to find out the best hypothesis so this can be done by starting with a collection of initial hypothesis or which we call as population and then evaluating each hypothesis in the current population so that evaluation will be done in relation to the fitness previously we have seen the probability calculation right so the same thing we used to calculate the fitness evaluation and then probabilistically selecting the most hypothesis the most fit hypothesis for producing the next generation so for that we use this formula just now we discussed this one and other members of the current population give rise to the next generation so using this formula whichever hypothesis is getting the best value so that we take as the most fit hypothesis that we are adding other than that whatever are there that also we add to the next generation by means of genetic operations we perform some operations on the remaining hypothesis whatever we have and we try to add that also in the next generation operations that we perform are mutation and crossover and then if it is reaching to the desired desired measure then we stop the process otherwise we have to repeat these steps steps from 2 to 4 until the entire population is updated or we reach a desired point so now let us go to the algorithm so this algorithm is taking three attributes fitness so this fitness is a function that assigns an evaluation score next we have some fitness threshold okay so this is the stopping criteria or the termination criteria this is some numerical value and then p the number of hypothesis to be included in the population out of the population how many hypothesis you want to add so that is indicated with p then we have r that is the fraction of the population to be replaced by crossover at each step and m is the mutation rate and then we just initialize the population that is indicated with letter capital p all the population is indicated with p then we are evaluating for each h in the population whatever suppose if you have 10 hypothesis okay so for each hypothesis you have to compute the fitness value after computing the fitness value while max h of fitness of h so that means out of the 10 hypothesis one will have the maximum value right that maximum hypothesis fitness value you are checking with the fitness threshold so if it is matching with the fitness threshold then we need not go into these details if it is less than the fitness threshold then we will be repeating all these steps the select procedure crossover mutate and then we update so in the selection once again we are calculating the pr of hi value okay and we will be selecting 1 minus r into p members of the original population in order to add to the next offspring to the next generation okay and then we perform crossover operation and then we also perform the mutation operation and then we update the original population with this new generation and once again we will evaluate so here repetition is happening you can see so evaluate for each h in p compute 
the fitness of the hypothesis again. So now our population is updated for the new population. Once again, calculate the fitness values. Again, check it with the fitness threshold. If it is reaching the threshold value, we will stop it. Otherwise, again, you have to repeat the process until it reaches to the fitness threshold value. And finally, this algorithm will return one hypothesis from the population that has highest fitness value. Now let us work out with one example. Okay, so here the fitness function we have taken is f of x is equals to x square. Here x is ranging from 0 to 31. Uh, one small reason also I will give you. We all, we all know we are using bit string representation. Okay, so two possibilities we have. An integer range is from my 2 power minus 31 to 2 power 31. So here overall I have 32 values, right? So I need at least 31 or 32 bits, let me say. So 2 power 32 representations I will get. So since, since integer is ranging from 2 power minus 30, 32 to 2 power plus 32. I am taking this number value. That's all. A simple reason. Because I am taking a numerical value here. And that too you can see. I have taken f of x is equals to x square. So now out of this range. Okay. First let us initial the terms. The fitness threshold I have assumed as 700. And P is equals to 4 I am taking. Okay, the number of hypotheses out of from all these hypotheses, that is from 0 to 31, all these are various hypotheses. Totally 32 hypotheses I have. Out of that, I am choosing only P is equals to 4. Only 4 hypotheses I am selecting for my population. Then R is equals to 1 by 4, that is 0 0.5. This is the fraction of population to be replaced. And then M is the mutation rate. Okay. So one bit at a time we will do, we will do. One bit per generation. So first let us start with the first step that is initializing the population. So here we are taking P is equals to four numbers in the range zero to 31. Okay. So in order to represent 31, I need five bits. How I can say that? We know the binary representation of 32. So it can be represented as 2 to the power of 5, right? Okay. So this length I am taking. So we are taking a length of 5 in order to represent this as a bit string. So the population that I have selected is 15, 25, 7 and 18. So you can also see the bit string representation of this. So now these are our four hypotheses which are included in the population. Then now the next step that is calculation of the fitness and for each H we have to perform the evaluation right. So we need to calculate the fitness value. Let us calculate the fitness value. I will just tabulate all the values so that it will be easy for comparison. So we have taken four strings and this is our initial population. I have given its equivalent numerical value also. And now we have to calculate the fitness value. Okay, what is the fitness function? F of x is equals to x square. So square of 15 is 225. Square of 25 is 625. Square of 7 is 49. Square of 18 is 324. So now, out of all the fitnesses value, which one is having me the highest fitness value? 625. Hypothesis 2 with fitness value 625. What is our fitness threshold? It is 700. 625 is less than 700. Okay. So it didn't reach the desired threshold value. So let's create a new generation or a new offspring indicated with PS. Okay. So to do that, 
we have seen the calculation of the probability, right? It is given as PR of HI is equals to thickness of HI divided by summation of thickness of all other hypothesis HJ, right? So now here I have also calculated the total. It is 1, 2, 2, 3. So the summation I have calculated, the value is 1, 2, 2, 3. So now we should calculate probability for each hypothesis. PR of H1 is fitness of H1, it is 225. 225 divided by 1, 2, 2, 3. That gives us 0 0.18. Similarly, PR of H2, which is 625 divided by the sum of all the thicknesses, that is 1, 2, 2, 3, which gives us 0 0.51. Similarly, PR of H3 is 49 divided by 1, 2, 2, 3, which gives us 0 0.04. Similarly, PR of H4 is also computed. It is 0 0.26. So now, now, once again, you can see the probability values. Whichever hypothesis is having a higher value of fitness is giving us a higher value of probability too. This is just a clue. So now, based on this, which one should be selected? So the one with higher probability, H1, H2, H4. So H3 is having a very much less value of probability. Okay. So anyhow, we have to randomly pick only few. So I'm selecting H1, H2, and H4. Okay. So here we have the formula also 1 minus R into P members must be selected. P value is 4. R value we have taken initially. It is 0 0.25. So if I simplify this, it is giving me 3. Okay. So we add these three to the next offspring or the, to the next generation. So I'm selecting H1, H2, and H4. Okay. So now the next operation, crossover. So in order to perform the crossover, I have to probabilistically select R dot P by 2. Okay. So R value is 0 0.25 multiplied with 4 divided by 2, which gives me 1. So pro probabilistically, randomly, I have to choose one pair and I have to perform the crossover operation. So here I have taken three values. First, I take combination of the first two. That is H1, H2 and H2, H4 in order to perform crossover. Okay. And here the crossover point I have taken, the I value I have taken as 2. So that means after 2 bits, I have to perform the crossover. So what are the pairs that we have selected? H1, H2 we have selected and H2, H4 we have selected. Why I am choosing H2 in common is, it is having a higher value. So if I take this in combination, I am expecting for a better generation. So only I am taking H2 in common. Okay, so now after the second bit, we need to perform the crossover. So after 0, 1, here after 1, 1. So if I do so, 0, 1 from the first parent and remaining 3 bits from the second parent, 0, 0, 1. And first 2 bits from H2 and remaining 3 from the H2. Okay, so these are the two new offsprings that are generated. Okay. So again, if I see H2 and H4, so here also the same thing. After 1, 1, I should take the remaining 3 bits from H4. It is 0, 1, 0. And then 2 bits from H2, that is already given. So 2 bits from H4 and remaining 3 bits from H2, 0, 0, 1. 
So like this, I have generated the new offsprings. Okay, so I have just tabulated it. So let us go through. Okay, so these are the new offsprings that are generated. I have given you its equivalent x value also. Okay. So if you see this, these new offspring x values you see, some have become a better and some we have even more less value compared to the previous step. Okay. So, so only after crossover, if I am not satisfied with the values, I go with mutation again. Okay. So now, as usual, let us add this to the population. So one second, let me clear the screen. So we are performing the mutation operation also. Mutation is always uh, choosing a string and randomly changing one bit, right? So I'm choosing H3 and H4 randomly and mutating at 0.3. Okay, I'm not choosing H1. Why? Because its value is much lower. Okay, so with the single bit manipulation, I cannot increase its value drastically. So I'm going in a probabilistic way. So I'm choosing H3 and H4. So this is the value of H3 that we have. So if I have to change at bit 3, so this 0 will be flipped to a 1. And this is its equivalent numerical value. Similarly, H4 bit string value is this one. I'm flipping the third bit. So the zero is turning to a one. It's equivalent X value is 28. And then uh, we have to update the offsprings or the population we have to update, right? Okay. So I have updated the population and you can also see its X value. This is our new population. And now, what I have to do once again, I have to perform an evaluation. Let us calculate the fitness again. Okay. So if I calculate the fitness, now you can see the fitness values. I have 81, 961, 441 and 784. Okay. So here the fitness va threshold value, once again, let us remember the threshold value. It is 700, right? So here I have two hypotheses, which are greater than the threshold value. So 961 is greater than 700, which is the threshold value. And even 784 is greater than the, greater than 700. What I should do, I should always take the max hypothesis, max fitness hypothesis value I should take. So max value is 961. It is greater than 700. So I can stop my procedure. So what will be returned by this algorithm? If I, okay, after performing this crossover and mutation also, suppose, still if I have these fitness values, if I have it less than 700, what I should do? I should again repeat the process. Okay, but here we have reached to the fitness threshold. So we can stop at this process. So here H2 and H4 are returned with high fitness value, but our algorithm will finally return one best hypothesis. So here, the best hypothesis that will be returned is, which one will be returned? Yes, correct. It is H2. So this is our best hypothesis returned by our genetic algorithm. Okay. So this is also one of the important concepts as per your examination point of view. Hope you all understand this genetic algorithm. Instead of rote learning, you practice this example yourself. Okay. I just gave you the trace of the algorithm. You can just post. If you have any doubts, you can post in the comment box. Thank you.